buried away in our archive, invisible and unseen by people for decades, were the blueprints of the galaxy. What makes the blueprint interesting is it's kind of a, a gateway into a aspect of the Star Wars production that we've never adequately explored, which is the uh, production art department. These guys that, that work on doing the blueprints and working with the art director are translating the, the spirit and as much as they can from the concept art, the original art, into something that can actually be built and used and you could shoot a movie on and there's enough room for people to walk around and do their business on. And uh, it's pretty remarkable. It's sort of part of, the, part of the filmmaking process that isn't really talked about, but it's the guys in the trenches that are also being very creative and uh, making something actually work. The guys that did draftings, did the drawings, uh, you know, we, we didn't come face to face with them very often. And of course they were in England we received things from them. They had to do a major amount of their work in 12 weeks, I think it was, uh, on the first Star Wars, and get it done and then have that disseminated uh, to all the different people who were making the, the sets. Boy, the but, detail. So the, Look at the, yeah. at the line drawing. The ones that grabbed me, of course, are the Millennium Falcon, seeing that. That was just like uh, incredible. And even the difference between the first film and the second film, two different sets of blueprints for those and how much they actually built on the set, because I remember the stage was not very big, at least on the first film, and, and everything was sort of scaled down. I think it was only four-fifths full size. Chewie, get us out of here! That was really interesting. There's a lot you can learn about the filmmaking process, even by looking at, at the space they had to work in, how they managed to build everything. You know, whether the set was elevated, for example, in the Rancor sequence, so that there was, there was blue screen work that had to be done and everything was raised up so you could, so it wouldn't sort of see the floor of the stage. Stuff you wouldn't know about. For me, a lot of it was about learning about set dressing, the importance of set dressing. Under the direction of, of such great production designers as John Barry and Norman Reynolds for the original trilogy and Gavin Bouquet, for the prequel trilogy, you have set dressers such as Roger Christian, you know, who won an Academy Award, who went on then to do the art direction along with Les Dilley, who was also on Star Wars for Alien. And they kind of, there was kind of a one-two punch there of Star Wars and Alien, where these guys really changed the way sets are dressed with this very sort of space fantasy functional look. And there was this other guy, Harry Lang, but he worked on all three Star Wars films as a draftsman and dresser, and he actually worked at NASA, you know, for Werner von Braun on this on the space missions and worked on 2001 and then came to Star Wars and he did the set dressing for all the cockpits and those things were made to look like real functional cockpits. Here's where the fun begins. I, I've forgotten how much I hate space travel. Over the years we've looked at the making of the Star Wars saga from so many different points of view, special effects, art department, uh, design. This is the first time that we've looked at the actual architectural reality of building all of these unique things in the Star Wars galaxy. These are the plans, these are the blueprints, this is how it was done. And we've given recognition to kind of some of the unsung heroes of the Star Wars saga. You know, over the years, I've had contact with people in Europe and the U.S. who want to know minuscule details about things because they, out there in the world, there are people who do amazing jobs of reproducing these things. And of course, the, this, this book of the blueprints will provide a lot of those details. I think what you're going to see are things that you never even imagined, and it'll texture the movie tremendously. You'll really be much more uh, aware of the effort that went into it and the artistry that went into it because it kind of fills in this gap between the ideas and the movie and what went on in the middle process and there were a lot of artists at work at that stage that, that brought everything they had to bear on the project and what you ended up with are these amazing movies. It's a unique book. It has a very special place in the pantheon of books that we've done. It's a gorgeous book and I think a very special addition to the literature of Star Wars. Mm -hmm.